Hello booktube, Sarah here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my weekly reads for December 31st, 2017. Um, yes, it is New Year's Eve. Happy New Year, everybody. Um, I uh, meant to film yesterday, but I had two more books to finish on my December TBR. So I thought, you know what, let's get them done and then I'm not carrying them over into, you know, 2018, essentially. Did I say that right? Two books left on my 2017 TBR. I didn't want to carry them over into 2018. So that's why I decided to hold off a day and record today. As you can see, the Christmas tree is still up and so are some of the Christmas decorations. They will be coming down this week. I do like to still have the tree up on New Year's. That's just me. Um, everybody's a little different. I know some people have already taken theirs down, but it's a fake tree. This thing could stay up all year round for all anybody cares. <laughs> the cats would love it because they can continue to chew on it all the time. Um, so what tea am I drinking today in my S mug that stands for super spectacular? No, <laughs> for Sarah, of course. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a tea from Trader Joe's, actually. And um, I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned this tea to you guys before. I'm probably going to overlap on teas um, because I only have so many of them. And I do these weekly reads every week. But, um, but yeah, so if I've already talked about it, just ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is, uh, like I said, from Trader Joe's, and it is a pumpkin spice rooibos, and it's a really yummy tea. It is seasonal. Um, it comes out in the fall, of course, with everything else pumpkin spice, but I highly recommend it if you like a good spicy tea. And I do. Um, yeah, this is really, really yummy, so I highly recommend it. Um, so let's get into the books that I have finished this week. So uh, I finished six books this week. And of course, these are going to be listed in order that I finish them. So the first one that I finished was Montana Secret Santa, and this was by Deborah Solemn. And this is book number three in the Love at the Chocolate Shop series. Um, I gave it a star rating of 3.5, and it has an average star rating on Goodreads of 3.99. I got four challenges completed out of this one. The first one was the radio station challenge for week eight, which was Christmas music. And the song was Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And um, that is read a book that takes place in a small town, and this one does. Um, the next one was for uh, my 15th book in the Anti-Stress Holiday Challenge on the Romance Readers Reading Group. Uh, the next one was the Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree Challenge, uh, challenge number 11, which was Dominic the Italian Donkey, which I have, or Dominic the Italian Christmas Donkey, which is a song I have never heard before. Um, and it is read a book that takes place in Italy, or has an animal on the cover, and as you can see from the cover, there is a dog, or a few dogs, on the cover of this book. And this was uh, also for the By the Numbers Quarterly Challenge for three words, of course, Montana Secret Santa, three words. Um, I enjoyed this story. It was the uh, story of Krista and Jonah, and um, she is new to town. Uh, she's been there about a year, and her and her best friend run a advertising agency in this very tiny town in Montana. And he grew up, was born and raised in that in this town, and then moved out and become became some big Silicon Valley millionaire. And he has sold his company, and he's now just looking for. He's kind of having some downtime. Um, his family had some issues that they were dealing with. Um, his sister's white or his sister's husband passed away, um, died unexpectedly, and his parents decided to go to Florida to look after her and the kids over Christmas, kind of help them through this very rough time. So he agreed to come back to town to look after their dogs. And literally at the very beginning of the book, he runs into, or the dogs run into Krista. And the story goes from there. It's a really, really cute story. Great small town Christmas story. I absolutely loved it. Um, you know, the relationship seemed very reasonable or very believable to me. You know, you got to meet some more of the other characters that you met in the first couple books. And yeah, I'm absolutely loving this series and I'm so, so thankful that I found it. Um, and I thank whichever one of my friends it was on Goodreads who posted that they either added it to their TBR or they were reading another book in this series because I am so thrilled with it and I absolutely love it. So highly recommend. The next book that I finished was Cup of Joy by Courtney Hunt. This is um, book number 12 and the final book in the Cupid's Coffee Shop series. I give this book three stars and it has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.25 stars. I was actually disappointed in this one. Um, I think the story was only like 40 pages long. And the build-up for this one has been happening throughout all the books. Um, Joy and Patrick meet at the very beginning in the very first book. She um, bakes cookies for the coffee shop and delivers them. And, of course, he's in love with her and she likes him. And But she's engaged. 
So then she finally calls off the engagement at Thanksgiving, but doesn't tell him till almost Christmas Eve. But almost the entire town knows. Now, if the town is that small, you'd think he would have heard about it. And then when they finally got together, it was like the next page of the book was done. And I was really disappointed. Um, you know, it was all the, should I tell him, should I not tell him? That was the whole basis of the story. So while it was a cute story, I liked the way it wrapped up the series. I was still really disappointed in the actual romance between Patrick and Joy because I would have liked to have seen more of like the courtship, if you know what I mean. So yeah, that was a little disappointing, but still an enjoyable read. I do, I did enjoy the series quite a bit. And if you haven't read it, definitely give it a ch uh, check it out. Like I said, they're only little novellas. They're like 30 or 40 pages long each. A very quick read. The next book that I finished, oh, I love this one, was Mr. Dickens and His Carol by Samantha Silva. This was narrated on audio by uh, Ewan Morton. I gave this book five stars. It has an average rating of 3.96 stars on Goodreads. And I got three challenges completed out of this one. You'll notice I didn't mention a challenge for the last one. Um, for novellas, I don't use for challenges because most of them, the books need to be at least 125 pages. Um, so the three challenges I got for this one were um, my Triple RC Monthly Challenge for number four, which was um, Small Business Saturday, which was essentially read a book that had... Um, not as many reviews on it, and because this is a brand new release, it didn't have a lot of reviews on it. Uh, the next one was also for the Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree Challenge, number 10, which was White Christmas, which was read a book with a white cover at least 50%, or a book with a 195 or 4 in the publication date. This was published in 2017, so it had a 1 in it. And this was also for the Buy the Numbers Quarterly Challenge. I got 5 words out of this one, which was great. Guys, I love this book. I absolutely loved this book. Now, you know, did it have flaws? Absolutely. Um, did it stay true to the, um, uh, the Christmas Carol, um, the Christmas Carol, um, uh, you know, how he actually wrote it? No, it didn't. I read The Man Who Invented Christmas last year, and it was all about Dickens writing a Christmas Carol. So this was a historical fiction novel. It took real events and kind of put a spin on it, and I love the spin that she put on it. There is an author's note to this story and my uh, the, my only complaint about the audiobook the audiobook did not include the author's note and when I'm reading in a historical fiction novel that follows like a real historical event I do love reading that author's note or that historical note or whatever it happens to be because it kind of gives you a little bit more insight into the story and I was disappointed that they didn't have that I had to go to my um my e-copy and and see if they actually had one I do actually want to buy a copy of this book in in hardback because I think it's just beautiful and I loved it and it was really great it was essentially some of the stuff is factual like you know Dickens was essentially about to become bankrupt he had friends and family members people he'd never even heard of were asking to borrow money and you know he has he had this very lavish lifestyle and he had six children one was just born and you know he was being told essentially by his publishers you have to write a Christmas story and it would be lovely if it included a ghost and of course he's like well I'm not writing what you guys want me to write so then he ends up meeting up with this woman and not that they have a relationship because he's married and, and you know, she's a widow, but, um, you know, she inspires him and uh, to write a Christmas Carol, which is the part that's not factual, of course. Um, but it was still a wonderfully told story. There are so many great nods to, um, lines from a Christmas Carol and things that happen in a Christmas Carol and other ones, other, uh, other of his books that, um, you know, are a nod to. There's a great thing that actually had me kind of laugh out loud towards the end of the book. There's these, um, these boys who, um, you know, ruffians, kind of like street kids, that kind of thing. Um, and they keep trying to harass him. And finally they're like, well, we just want to be famous. We want to be in your book, you know, and he does. And I think he did, I think this is factual that he used to collect names and he would use them later in his books. And, you know, he asks the boy, well, you know, what's your name? Maybe I'll use it in my next book. And he's like, David Copperfield. And I had to kind of laugh. I've never read it, but I do know David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. So I thought that was really kind of interesting. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. The narration was spot on. Um, and Dickens's wife is actually Scottish. And when she was talking, the narrator did a brilliant Scottish accent. I mean, he is British to begin with. The narration was great. You got to, you know, just enjoy the story. And yeah, I absolutely recommend this one. It was a great, great Christmas read. And it's one I could absolutely see myself rereading again in another few years. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, the next book that I finished was The Heiress and the Hothead by Sabrina Jeffries. 
Uh, this is book number 1.5 in the Sinful Suitor series. I gave it 3.5 stars, and it has an average rating on Goodreads of 3.49 stars. This was a novella, um, again, so I didn't have any challenges for this one. I think it was around 80 pages. Um, it was a cute story. It took place at Christmas time. The book preceding this one, which I think is called The Art of Seduction, um, uh, you got a nod to this story at the very end of that one, so it kind of led into this one. And it takes place at Christmas time, and it's about Stefan um, and Amanda. Amanda's American, Stefan is British. And he writes for newspapers, and he's trying to take down these mills, like these cotton mills, because of the way they treat their workers and things. Well, she is an heiress to a cotton mill in America. And, you know, of course, they're butting heads throughout the whole book, and then something happens, and it kind of changes their tune. And it's a really interesting look into the way that workers were treated back then, and, you know, these children working for literally slave wages and living in dire conditions it, it was that part of it was a little sad but it does have a happy ending of course and yeah I enjoyed it it's a great little series and it was a lot of fun and the last book that I finished this week and I just finished it this morning when I was on my way to pick up my husband from work was Snow Angel Cove by Rayanne Thane um, this was narrated on audio by Celeste Kilua and it is the first book in the Haven's Point series and it has an average rating on Goodreads of three point or no I gave it a rating of 3.5 stars. It has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.15 stars. Um, I got two challenges completed out of this one. Uh, one for my monthly challenge for the Triple RC, which was National and Violin Day. And I cannot remember, I think it was something about something beautiful. And I th think this one has an absolutely stunning cover. And the other one, of course, was for the By, By the Numbers Quarterly Challenge. Three words for this one. Um, yeah, this one I liked. Um, it, it, was, it was a great contemporary romance Christmas story I found the romance part of it happened way too quickly the story begins two weeks before Christmas Eliza shows up with her young daughter and uh, into Haven Point because she's about to become the manager the new manager assistant manager I think for a small hotel as she arrives in town the hotel is currently burning to the ground so she is now out of work so her and her daughter go into town and try and you know she wants to try and figure out what to do next and literally she gets hit by a car not horribly, you know, it was like he was able to speed to, to slow down in time and stuff like that. But his name is Aiden and he is another, he's a dot com billionaire, of course, still working for the company that, uh, the tech company that he founded. And um, he's pretty much bought out most of the town. And the townsfolk don't really like him because they don't know what he's going to do, whether he's going to close and people are going to lose their jobs or what have you. But he's invited his entire 20 member family to Christmas and he hires Eliza to come in and kind of help as the housekeeper while, you know, the family's there and get everything set up before they show up. And of course the romance goes from there. Like I said, it was very quick. It started two weeks before Christmas and ended on Christmas Eve. I felt it was a little rushed, but that's me considering he was even gone for part of it. Like he was back in California. The story takes place in Idaho. My other big issue with this was that this is a, and I didn't realize this until I started listening to the book, that this is a jumping off or a secondary series from the, um, um, snow, snow something. I can't remember the name. I'll put it right here. Um, the name of the other series that Ray Ann Thane writes. All the characters that show up for Christmas dinner or to spend Christmas at Aiden's house are his extended family, and they're all from that series. So you're kind of getting little glimpses of what happens in those books, and that's fine. I've always said with romance novels, you know how they end. It's the journey on how they get there. That's interesting. But the fact is, is that they almost broke it down, like exactly what happened to every single person. And it was a little much. There were a lot of characters and, you know, I, I didn't think it was, I understand the reasoning, like to kind of introduce one series into another, but I wish I had known ahead of time. I bet you, although I haven't looked on Goodreads, I, I guarantee that if I go and look on Goodreads, it probably tells me that this is a continuation series off of that one. You don't have to have read one to read the, read the other. I read the first one in the other series, which was called, um, Blueberry something or other. Blueberry Summer or Blackberry Summer. Blackberry Summer, I think it was called. I read that earlier this year, and it was a good book, too. She's a good author. I do like her books. They are very enjoyable. And if you like contemporary romance, check them out. Again, this was a really, really cute Christmas story. There's a little girl. Uh, Eliza has a young daughter in this story, and she's absolutely adorable. I find sometimes it can go one way or the other. The kids can either be really cute or really annoying. And this kid was really cute, and I did like her quite a bit. So, what am I currently reading? Um, I haven't even started it yet. I do plan after I'm done recording all my, um, booktube videos that I have to record this morning. Um, I have to go out and do some running around. Um, and I will start listening to that, this in the card then. And it is One Good Earl Deserves a Lover by Sarah McLean. 
This is book number two in the Rules of Scoundrel series. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's narrated on audio by Rosalind Landor. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is one of the two audiobooks that I have out of the library. I'm starting with my library books because they actually have a due date on them and have to go back. So that's why this one is getting read first. And my um, ebook that I'm currently reading is How to Fall in Love by Cecilia Hearn. Um, this is um, a story about a woman who um, essentially someone commits suicide and or is trying to commit suicide and she wants to teach that person how to how to love and how to live. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Um, and um, so yeah, I'm only about one chapter into it. I just started it this morning, but I am very much looking forward to it. So anyway, guys, that is it for my reading. I realized, though, I didn't show you guys last week what I was knitting on over the weekend, so I'm going to show you what I'm knitting on this weekend. Living in this adorable, adorable camp. Do you see the campers? <laughs> my camping bag, it is a sweater. I cast on a new sweater because I wanted to. Um, the sweater, excuse me, for reaching, I do apologize. Let me see if I can quickly, quickly bring up and show you guys the pattern. I should have had this, or the finished piece. I should have had this up before I started recording, and I do apologize for that. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see here, projects. So uh, the pattern is called the Campside Cardi, and it is by Alicia Plummer. She is one of my favorite designers, and this cardigan is just gorgeous. Um, this, I had started knitting this before quite some time ago, but um, unfortunately I had put it away to do something else, and when I went back to it a couple months later, I had no idea where I was in the pattern. I hadn't written anything down or anything like that, so I'm restarting it. So there is the pattern. Sorry for the glare, guys, but can you see like the holes? So like the lace work in the back of it. So it's a nice, it kind of covers your, yeah, it covers your butt kind of cardigan. Um, it calls for you to do full length sleeves. Unfortunately, I don't have quite enough yarn and I would rather cover my, patu my patukas then come all the way down to my wrist because I tend to push up my sleeves on my sweaters anyway. I don't know if you guys do the same. So I'm only going to do it at like a three quarter length sleeve. So I'll save. I'm just shy of having enough yarn for the pattern. So um, let me show it to you guys. Um, I'm partway through a row, so I apologize. This is just what I've started. Nothing terribly interesting. That's all I have so far. Um, but the yarn is just gorgeous. It is, um, it's for, from a company called Madeline Tosh and they're a pricier yarn, um, but yeah, absolutely beautiful. The colorway is called Pecan Hull, which is upside. No, that's right. It's called Pecan Hull, and it's very, very pretty brown. So yeah, so that is that. That is what I'm going to be knitting this afternoon and tomorrow. Um, but anyway, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, uh, coming this week, I will be. I'm going to be recording next two videos. The first one is my kind of urine review. Um, I will talk more about that when I actually do that video, so stay tuned for that. But it's essentially my bookish year in review. And then, of course, after that, um, on Thursday, I will be posting my December wrap-up. Even though I'm doing a year in review, I still do want to do a December wrap-up because all the books I read in December definitely get, you know, should get a mention, and I'll let you guys know how I did in December. But anyway, guys, that is it for me. Um, I really hope you have a very safe, happy, and healthy uh, 2018 Please do stay safe tonight if you are going out, take a cab, take an Uber, um, or stay home. My husband and I are staying home tonight. We are ordering in Chinese food, and I'm going to be chatting with my friends on a VKN, and I'll be casting on a new pair of socks because one can never have too many pairs of socks on their needles. And yeah, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, and I hope to see you guys all in my next video. Until then, take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.